So section 5.1 is on exponents, and I've already had some people tell me, oh, these are really easy, and, um, but for some of us it's not, and, and for a lot of people we think it's easy, because we were given a set of rules, and it was kind of like, memorize these, get your answer, and go, but then um, you don't do it for two weeks and you forget. Um, so the rules I'm going to argue are not enough. You really should understand. Um, <clears throat> but we're going to start with the basic thing. When I have an exponent, there's two parts. Uh, the b is the base, so I have b raised to the e. The e is the exponent, okay? The base is the number we are multiplying by. The e, the exponent, is the number of times we multiply by that base. So for instance, here I have 3 to the, I'm going to change that to 3 to the 4th, okay? So 3 to the 4th, what that means is multiply by the base, multiply by 3, how many times? This does not mean 3 times 4. We already have something for that. It's called 3 times 4. Literally what this means is multiply by that base, multiply by that 3, 4 times. We multiply by the 3, 4 times times, right? And so then we could multiply that. 3 times 3 is 9. 9 times 3 is 27. 27 times 3 is 81. So 3 to the fourth power is not 12. It's 81, okay? Some of you would have done uh, these two to make a 9, these two to make a 9, and 9 times 9 is 81. I'm, I'm fine with that as well. Um, okay, let's keep going. So what if I have a, a to the third times a squared? Some of you think you know. You're like, you know, say, what do you think it is? Some are like, I don't know, a, a to the fifth, a to the sixth, a to the first. A lot of people make it a to the ninth. I get lots of answers for this, but what's, what's right? Well, I have no doubt, because I had a really good algebra teacher, and what, what, what my teacher taught me was, when in doubt, if you have any doubt at all, write out what it means. What does a to the third mean? We are multiplying by the base, which is a, three times. This is a to the third, isn't it? Times another a squared. If I multiply these three a's with these two a's, we end up with what? How many a's? Five, six, nine? See, some of these answers just become nonsense now. Because when you write it out, then I look at this and I go, oh, this is a to the fifth. And you're like, oh, yeah, I remember this rule. Just add the exponents. No, we don't just do anything, right? And the key here is that what are we doing with these two a's? We're not really adding. We're multiplying, right? So why do we add the exponents? Because the exponents are how many times we are multiplying. So we are not just adding two numbers. We are adding how many of the a's we are multiplying by. So we are not really just, it's not an addition problem. So beware. And some of you still aren't very happy with me right now. Uh, well, let's keep going, okay? So 2 to the 3rd and 2 to the 8th. You're like, oh, I got this rule now. I'm telling you, don't just have the rule. Understand it. Now, do you have to write out all of them? No. This is the one that if you, if you don't, if you aren't sure, write it out. Could I write out 2 to the 3rd? That would be what? 3 twos. 2 to the 8th would be another 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 freaking twos, right? So I've got 3 of them, and 8 more give me what? 2 to the 11th. No doubt in my mind. So when in doubt, write it out. That's annoying because it rhymes, and it stuck with me for many, many years. Okay? Here's one level where I will catch some people. 5 to the 3rd times 5 to the 8th times 5. So he's like, I got this. This is 5 to the 11th. Nope. Well, I just added the 3 and the 8. Shouldn't just do anything. What is 5 to the 3rd? 3 fives times 5 to the 8th. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Freaking fives. Times another 5 at the end. Count the fives. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. There's not 11. There are 12. Technically, I could call this 5 to the first and add the exponents, but you're not really, it's not really just adding. It's not an addition problem. You're adding exponents. You're adding the number of times you're multiplying by 5. We are multiplying by 5 a total of 12 times. 
If I have r plus s to the seventh, r plus s to the sixth, I'm not going to write this one out, right? We write it out when it's easy so that I can handle it and understand it when it's harder. What's our base? What's our group that we're multiplying by this time? And how many times am I multiplying it? Seven times and six times would give me a total of 13 times. Could I write that out there? Yes, I could write out r plus s 13 times. But the idea is what? Write it out when it's easy so that when I get to something harder, I don't have to go, what's the rule? The same rule that makes sense up here makes sense down here. Okay. In all honesty, the adding is probably the, the, the only rule that I really kind of like. Um, this, the idea of subtracting, oh, drives me crazy. Because you subtract and so you got to deal with negatives, it gets all crazy. Here's what I do. I have a to the fifth over a to the third. I know that a divided by a would cancel out, leaving me with a one, right? So how many a's are on the top? And, and by the way, if you have doubt about this, again, write out how many a's are on the top, how many are on the bottom, and start canceling. Every a divided by a becomes a one, becomes a one, becomes a one. So what am I left with? a squared. That, I have no doubt. You write it out, you do it. Some of you are like, oh yeah, it's just 5 minus 3. Awesome. Do this one. a to the third over a to the fifth. If you do a subtraction problem, you're going to end up with a to the negative 2, which is actually not the way we want the answer anyway. And some of you know how to fix that, and that's fine. But here's all I would do. I would write it out on the top, 3 a's, and I would write out on the bottom. Uh, i got to make some more room here. There we go. I would write out on the bottom, 5 a's. Because currently, this is not the answer we're looking for, right? And I would start canceling. 1, 1, 1. How many are on the top? 3. How many are on the bottom? 5. Cancel them. What's left? Well, a squared. But here's the problem. Not just what's left. Where is it left? Because the answer is not a squared. That a squared was left on the bottom of the denominator. Well, wait a second. So stick it on the bottom. What goes on top? What's left up there? Some people will say nothing. They all disappear. No, because anything divided by itself is not nothing. Anything divided by itself would make 1. 1 over a squared, and that's the answer I would want. That's the answer you need to have. Yes, you can use subtraction, make it a negative exponent, and fix it. Um, I would just... And, and like I said, I don't have to write this out. I can think about how many are on the top, how many are on the bottom, cancel them, and find out what's left and where. For instance, I will write this out, and some of you may need to, because maybe you still have some doubt. But I would look at this and go, right, how many sevens are there? Nine on the top, four on the bottom. How many in common that would cancel out? Four of them would cancel, leaving me with... 5. 5 where? On the top. If you want to put something on the bottom, you can stick a 1 there. It's not really necessary. Okay? You're like, I don't know. I just like the rule. I'm telling you it's going to get you in trouble. And, and I hope you would know by now. I, I understand you also have a lot of experience, but um, I had a lot of experience with the math. And I'm telling you, I've worked with students uh, for years that they thought they knew the rules of exponents, and then they get to it, and they have doubt. And if you would just take the time and write it out, 5, 6, oh, friggin 7, 8, 9, over 4. And then what? Cancel out. How many are on the top? How many are on the bottom? Cancel, leaving us with 5 on the top. There's no doubt in my mind. I can, I can go straight from this to this, but it's not by using any rules. I'm doing this in my head. And some of you are too, and that doesn't bother me, but I'm telling you, until you can do that in your head, you should not be applying any rules. This should make sense. You get to Math 51, you're going to be doing this with some crazy, crazy rules and some crazy numbers. And people start shutting down and going, this is, nah, this is too hard. The rules aren't working for me anymore. So it should make sense right now when it's easy, so that when we get to where it's harder, 
you will be able to do those as well. What do I do when it's a mixture of things? Well, I could write it all out. Here's what I would do. Take the 4 over 6. Reduce it. 4 and 6 are both divisible by. So I know my answer is going to start with a 2 on the top and a 3 on the bottom. So basically reduce the numbers. Now cancel the variables. We have 5 p's on the top, 2 on the bottom. I see 2 canceling out, leaving me with p to the 3rd on the top. q to the 7th over q. I see 7 q's on the top, 1 on the bottom. So when they cancel, I'm left with 6 on the top. If that didn't make sense to you, then I would do this. Take the 2 thirds and write out. And then write out 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And 1 cancels, leaving us with 6. Um, you're like, well, that takes too long. I understand. I understand it takes time. But what always drives me crazy is I will watch people try to use rules and save time and then miss questions. And they miss so many questions that they fail a test. And I go, well, you haven't really saved yourself any time because now you have to retake the course. That makes no sense to me. And then I finally convince those people to write them out. And they start writing them out and they start making sense. They start getting the right answer. If you have any doubt on any of these rules, you should always be able to write them out. 3x squared, y to the 5th, 27x to the 9th, y to the 5th. Let's start with the numbers. 3, 27. Those are reducible, divisible by 3. Makes that on the top, 1 over 9. Talk about the x's. Currently on the top, I see 2x's. On the bottom, I see Nine. I'm not, once again, I'm doing this in my head. Two cancel, leaving me with seven. Where? Don't put x to the seventh up here. Like, oh no, I didn't, I had to put x to the negative seventh. What? I mean, it's right, but that's not what we want. Really, where are those x's left? On the bottom. What about y to the fifth and y to the fifth? Somebody's going to apply the rule and they're going to put y to the zero. Technically, it's not wrong, but that would not be full credit. But think about it. What do I have? I have 5y's on the top. I've got 5y's on the bottom. They all cancel out. So where do I leave y's? They're all gone. This is the answer we're looking for. All the y's completely canceled out. Not that they disappeared. They just made a whole bunch of 1's. This brings up two things. It brings up a zero exponent, and it also brings up negative exponents, and so I want to talk about those real quick. I know that 3 to the first is 3. I also know that 3 squared is what? Well, 3 times 3, or 9. 3 to the third is 3 times 3 times 3, or 27. What's going on up here, right? As I am adding 1 to an exponent, as I'm adding 1 to an exponent, we are multiplying by another 3. As we add exponents, we multiply by another one of the base. Every 1 we add to the top means I multiply by another 3 down here. That shouldn't be profound. What about this, though? What if I want to go backwards? 3, 2, 1, 0. See, going to the left, we're not adding one, we are subtracting one. How do I go from 27 back to 9? It's not by multiplying by 3, is it? We're going the opposite direction. So if adding one means multiply by 3, minus one means divide by 3. Divide by 3. So how do I go from 3 to the 1 to 3 to the 0? The most common mistake is that people here will tell me that this is 0. And that's incorrect. Because going to the right, we are multiplying by 3, multiply by 3, multiply by 3. Going to the left, we are dividing. So 27, 9, 3. What is 3 divided by 3? 
3 to the 0 power is 1. What's 3 to the negative 1? What if I go back one more? Well, then I'm going to divide by another 3. What's 1 divided by 3? Besides kind of a scary decimal, let's just call it 1 third. What if I divide 1 third by 3? It becomes 1 over 9. As we go to the right, we are multiplying by 3. As we go to the left, we are dividing by 3. Positive exponents mean multiply by the base. Negative exponents mean divide by the base. So this works for 3. 3 to the 0 is 1. Does this work for any number? Yim? Well, let's see. X stands for any number, right? X to the first is just X. X squared means... X to the third means... What are we doing as we add 1? We are multiplying by another... I shouldn't use that for multiply. We are multiplying by another X. We are multiplying by another X as we go to the right. So what if I want to go to the left? Instead of multiplying by x, we divide by an x. We divide it away. We divide it away. x to the third divided by x, one cancels, leaving me with x squared. x squared divided by x, one cancels, going to the left. What is x divided by x? What about negative 1? What about negative 2? Take that, going to the left, and divide it by x. Makes it 1 divided by x. The next one would be 1 divided by x twice, or 1 divided by x squared. This is a big deal. Because this means, if it works for x, that it works for any number. X stands for any real number. Zero is kind of an exception with this. We're not trying to get caught up in that. But X, right, we're assuming X is some number, you know, one or higher, decimals even. Anything but zero, basically. But anything that is raised to the zero power equals what? One. X to the zero equals one. Which means that any number raised to the zero power is one. What about three to the negative third? Do not make that negative 9. That's not what an exponent means, right? Positive exponent means multiply by the base. So a negative exponent means the opposite. Instead of multiplying by the base, we are dividing by the base. So what is x to the negative 1? It literally means take 1 and divide it by x. And some of you are like, oh yeah, I remember that. This travels down and the exponent just magically becomes positive and I did that and I got my gold star. And that's fine, but it should make sense. If a positive exponent means multiply, then a negative exponent is the opposite. It means divide. So, let's do a quick recap with this, and I think we're almost done with this section. Yeah. Uh, what is 1,948 raised to the 0? Well, anything to the 0 power is 1, including a really big number like 1,948. What about negative 9? What is negative 9 to the 0? Well, it's still a number raised to the 0. It's still 1. What about negative 9 to the 0? Geez, that sounds a lot like what we just said, but it's actually different. See, on the last one, this entire group is being raised to the zero power. That makes the whole thing one. On example 11, what's being raised to the zero power is just the 9. Why does that work? PEMDAS, parentheses, exponent, multiply, divide, add, subtract. See, this zero is an exponent right here, right? And the only thing that comes before exponents is parentheses, which is why in example 10, the whole group is being raised to the zero power. In example 11, only the 9 is being raised to the zero power. What's that negative doing, really? When I have a negative in front of a number, actually it's multiplying. That's like negative 1 times 9. Okay, So since it's multiplying, the 9 to the 0 becomes a 1, 
the negative makes it a negative 1. See if we can do that with here. What's 3x to the 0? Well, the whole group raised to the 0 power would make a 1. What is 3x to the 0? Geez, that sounds like what I just said, right? But it's different. Why? This time, it's 3 times x to the 0. So what's being raised to the 0 is just the x. PEMDAS, the exponent, occurs before the multiplying. So this really becomes 3 times 1, or just 3. What's 7 squared to the 4th? You're like, oh, I remember there's a rule for this. Somebody's going to tell me 7 to the 6th. Somebody's going to tell me 7 to the 8th. Somebody's going to tell me 7 to the 16th. I'll give you a hint. If you have any doubt, write it out. What does 7 squared mean? Now that group is being raised to the fourth power, which means that 7 squared is occurring four times. When I look at all that, I'm multiplying all those 7s together. You tell me, are there 6? Are there 8? Are there 16? See, some of those answers just become ridiculous. The minute you write it out, you go, geez, that just looks like there's 8 of them. Well, guess what? There's 8 of them. I wouldn't write it out to this point because I don't need to. I really, I, that first rule, like I said, the adding exponents, if you're really comfortable with that, and mo most people are, then all I would do to make this make sense is I would just do what's 7 squared to the 4th. Well, that's 7 to the 2, 4, 6, 8. That's what I would do. But if you're like, eh, and I don't feel as comfortable with that, I have a little more doubt than you do, Mr. Akers. Okay, then write it out. Write out as much as you need, not to get the answer right, because I just memorized the rule, but to get it right because it makes sense. What's y to the fifth to the third? Try it out. Take a second, pause these. See if you can just do these with the rule. If you can, then, then chances are you actually understand what you're doing and you're not just applying the rules. I'm going to go ahead and start on this one. y to the fifth to the third. What would I write? y to the fifth to the third, which means three times. Now, for me, this next rule makes complete sense. If I look at this, five y's, five y's, and five y's, it's y to the fifteen. If that doesn't make sense, then I literally could write out y to the fifth and write that out what? Three times and end up with y to the fifteenth. People are looking at me like I'm crazy because they're like, that's not necessary. It's so much more complicated. I'm telling you, I've worked with enough students that if you're not comfortable with the rules, if they don't make sense, you should be writing these out till these rules make sense. This is not something you should have to memorize. This is something that should make sense. What's 3a to the third? I'll tell you right now, 27a to the third. I didn't do that using rules. In my mind, when I'm actually doing this, I see 3a to the third, and I'm thinking 3a times itself three times. Then I multiply 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. A times A times A is A to the third. I'm not using the rules. I'm writing it out. Now I'm able to do it in my head and kind of make sense out of it. Yes, I know the rules and I could apply the rules, but I don't. They're not on this. Heck no. I, this, this should make sense. It needs to make sense when it's easy so you can apply it the same rules when it's hard. What's negative 5x fourth squared? Some people will tell me negative 10 x to the 8th. Some people will tell me negative 10 x to the 6th. I'll have some people tell me 10 x to the 8th, 10 x to the 6th. I'll have some people tell me uh, 10 x to the 16th, negative 10 x to the 16th, 25 x to the 16th, negative 25. I get, I've seen all these answers. Are they all right? They can't all be right.
what do we do? Write out negative 5 x to the fourth squared. That means I write that out twice. What is negative 5 times negative 5? Like I thought I was supposed to add sometimes. No, you're not understanding then. We were never really adding. We were multiplying. When you are adding exponents, you're adding the number of times you multiply. You're confusing yourself. Write it out. Negative 5 times negative 5 is positive 25. x to the 4th and x to the 4th is x to the 8th. I'm not really adding there. What am I doing? I'm adding how many times we are multiplying. But we're really multiplying by x 8 times. This example here, I can tell you the answer right off the top of my head. It's not math magic. I know these rules. I understand these rules. C, can you do this? Just apply all your rules and knock this out. You should have 18, A to the, looks like 17th, B to the 6th. How did I do that? I did this, 3a to the 7th b, 3a to the 7th b, that's 3a to the 7th squared, twice, 2a to the 3rd, b to the 4th, and then I could multiply 3 times 3 times 2, 9 times 2 is 18, a to the 7th, a to the 14th, a to the 17th, b squared to the 6th. If I lost you on that last part, then guess what? Write it out more. And you're like, ah, but it takes forever. It doesn't matter if it helps you get it right. If it helps you get it right and it helps it make sense, that's more important than saving yourself 20 seconds. 3, 9, 18. Count the A's. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Count the B's. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. No doubt in my mind, because I haven't memorized these rules. I get them. They make sense. What about fractions? If you're not sure if that bottom number is supposed to be a 5 or a 10, Write it out. What's x over 5 squared mean? Times. How do I multiply fractions? Straight across x times x is x. 5 times 5 is 20. 3a to the 4th over b to the 3rd all cubed. Oh boy. What do you do? Write it out. 3a to the 4th b cubed. 3a to the 4th b cubed. 3a to the 4th b cubed. Do I do this every time? Not on paper. I've done this enough that it makes sense. I can do this in my head. 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. a to the 12th b to the 9th. If you need more, then write out more. 3a to the 4th, b cubed. 3a to the 4th, b cubed. 3a to the 4th, b cubed. 27, 4, 8, 12 a's, 3, 6, 9 b's. No doubt in my mind. Write it out. I'm going to leave this here for a second. Uh, yeah, there we go. So um, this is kind of all of our rules. But I'm telling you, you know, and copy it down. Have this in your notes. Um, but this is not something you should have to memorize. All of these rules should make sense. Our product rule, a to the m times a to the n. Yes, I can add the exponents. Does that make it an addition problem? No. We are multiplying, which means we are adding the exponents. We are adding the number of times we multiply by that base. Quotient rule. Oh, I hate this rule because it just jacks the people if you don't understand it. Yes, I can subtract them. I don't like to. 
I like to write it out, cancel, see what's left. I'm not lying, that's how I do these. Power rule, yes, I can take the exponents and I can multiply them. People get themselves in trouble with this, so what do you do? I'd write it out. A, B to the N, that N distributes, like magic. No, write out A, B times A, B. Well, N times, yeah, I know, it's kind of complicated, but basically each thing gets raised to the nth power. Fraction, each term gets raised to the nth power. I wouldn't be using these rules, not in this course. Now you get to my Math 51, I'm going to be telling you, you need to know these rules. And you should have had a good Math 55 teacher that made you write it out, so you understood it, so that now that you're in Math 51, we're going to apply it to some crazy stuff. Also, anything raised to the zero power is 1. Anything to the first power is itself. And we're going to leave it at that. I'll pick up with that on the next section.